I was hoping I could get my lotion all rubbed in before <laughs> this intro ended, but I didn't. Um, mm. Yeah. So, right. hi, guys. Welcome hi. to History of Haunting. Yeah, I'm Laura, one of your hosts. <laughs> the lotionless one. Right? The dry. The dry Arizona <laughs> desert one. And I am Carrie with the supple hands. Um, bear with us, guys. Laura and I actually haven't recorded in a bit of time because we were so ahead of the game for so long and we had episodes in the bank and then um that ended somehow yeah, and then we fucked that up so we fucked that up as <laughs> you, we were so excited about it and we're feeling real good about life um so yeah yeah that's that's what's going on uh over here how are you cool. guys uh how are you Laura what's been going on over in your little dry barren neck of the woods um let's see not much um zane had his art show at school today so oh, i like to love That's those cute. yes his <laughs> self-portrait was adorable mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he, he told me i said okay well we got to be fast um because i had to get back to record so <laughs> he's like okay but you're you you can take time and like ponder my portrait and see where i i did um ponder my art and see how much effort I put in. I was like, yeah, starting all the time to ponder. <laughs> like, I'd really like it if you would soak man. it in and reflect <laughs> on what I was feeling this day. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So I think that's wonderful. going on 60, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. That's so cute. That's cute. Yeah. Um, Nothing going on here. I, um, mm -hmm. mm, let me think. Mm -hmm. My roses are blooming. I'm very excited about that. Nice. Mm, yes, they're beautiful, bright, bright pink. So I'm very excited every day. I come downstairs and open up the blinds in the foyer window and I'm like, oh my God, there's three more. I'm so excited about it. I am really glad that, you know, warmer weather's coming around. The yard is greening up and so. Nice. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. The other thing, and I meant to show you this before I started recording, but I didn't, is I got all the little, like, accoutrement for our camera for Trans Allegheny. Oh, cool, cool. Yes. I got Check some tea. It out. Oh, that's Ooh, so fancy. Ah. Uh, it's isn't the that neat? Thing. Mm -hmm. It is it's fancy. It's really nice, actually. It's good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the microphone comes there, next so week. So you put a, a light on our uh, video camera, one of the video cameras? Mm -hmm. IR light and then mm -hmm. a lens hood. Oh. Yeah, this little protective thing so that like extraneous light doesn't. I noticed mm -hmm. in a lot of our investigation videos that there's no, because there's no lens hood blocking out like surrounding light, there's all mm -hmm. of these lens flares in the video that are mm -hmm. blocking anything that may be pertinent to the investigation. So got that. And then I got the um, hand stabilizer bar thingy here. Okay. And the microphone is coming next week. And I got all, all right. of these things on Amazon for a total of $40. We already had Thanks, the camera. Bezos. Thanks, Bezos. But if I wanted to buy exactly this, Mm -hmm. and camera and all it was 160 i'm like mm, yeah this is what my gift card's gonna go to thank you nice yeah well, that's exciting it's always fun to get new toys it is yes it is yes i'm excited about that i also got us and there's no battery in it but i got us a black light flashlight mm. which a couple of our new investigator friends have said they've had a lot of really good success photographing shadow figures with this black light hmm yeah interesting 
Yeah, so I thought we'd I, get um, it and give it a whirl. I also have a black light flashlight, but for a very different reason. Scorpions. Scorpion friends. Scorpion friends, yes. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. We're um, getting ready to go. We're leaving. Well, we'll be there in three weeks. <clears throat> the investigation is three weeks from I tomorrow night. I cannot believe. One, it's almost May. <laughs> Two. Yeah. My son graduates in like, or, you know, finishes his grade in a few weeks. Like, yeah. I can't believe the school year is mm-hmm. almost over. Summer's here. Like, I'm very. Where is the time old going? And at a loss for words. <laughs> I'm like, wh- how did it get this far? <laughs> I don't understand. Well, at time for whatever reason, time is really flying by for me lately because. Like, on Friday nights, I'm like, yeah, it's Friday night. I have the weekend. I can do this in my house and this in my yard and da-da-da-da-da. And then Sunday comes, and I'm like, oh, the weekend's over. But before I know it, it's fucking Friday again. And the weekend come is circled right back. I'm like, time is really flying. Um, which is good and bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My schedule is really hectic between the podcast, just life, working, being mm-hmm. a parent. Mm-hmm. Um and working on my house, I have the same thing. Like, and we've been doing a lot of stuff too. So we yeah. went to a hockey game last week. Um, go Blackhawks! And um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we went to the symphony last night. I took them to the ASU symphony. So we had some wow, stuff like booked yeah. in. Plus, we had family visiting from out of town for a week. So yeah, we yeah, been, that's true. We I wondered why I didn't hear from so. you last night. I was like, my mom's like, have you talked to Laura tonight? I'm like, no, I haven't. I don't know what she's doing. Yeah, we went to the ASU Symphony for a bit. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So other than that, yeah, I'm just kind of trying to get ready um, for this big, big investigation. And um, today is my dog Chewbacca, also known as Chewy. Today is his fourth birthday. Happy birthday, Chewy. Yes, my little baby dog. I love him so much. And um, it is also the one year anniversary of when I closed on this house. I can't believe we've been living in it for a year. You've got a lot done, though, in a year. Um, I I still have pictures to hang in the living room, though. (laughs) I just put pictures on, like, there were some hangers still in the wall. So wherever there were hangers, I (laughs) stuck the art so that it was off the ground. (laughs) And that's where it still is. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Um, That's what I'm talking about. So just only in the office have I actually deliberately hung things in yes. certain areas this is, so. this room is the only one that's done and it's constantly being added to simply because i've got all my mixed tiles back here from the places we've mm-hmm. investigated and stuff and as we do more then i buy more mixed tiles and so the room eventually is just going to be like literally floor to ceiling wall to wall mixed tiles mm-hmm. but um this room is the only room that's done to my absolute joy Every other room, I'm like, well, I think I want to change that. Or maybe I want to put, do that. Maybe I should paint this wall. And this would look good with drapes. And I, home ownership is just constant change. And, you know, once you're in it and your space and you see, you know, well, it would be nice if we had this over here, or if we had something over there. And it's constant. I had no idea. In an apartment, it's just like move the shit in and there it is. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I just finished, like, because I started on one room too. So I've done the yeah. office. Yeah. I worked on like my hall closet a little bit. My big hall closet is a fucking mess. It's the one by Zane's room for stuff. <laughs> the one by I, Zane's I room. I started on Zane's room, but mostly I'm gonna wait until he goes um, away in the summer for a little while, and then I'll do it because trying to take stuff out of your child's room when they're around. Yep. That's so special to me. I'm like, it's a t-shirt that doesn't fit. <laughs> can't be that special. Koi is the same way, especially with stuff we've had forever. And he's like, but that's from my childhood. Right? Yeah. It's I, an I old throw it. pillow. What is the... What? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so Caleb used to say that. Like, when he was, like, eight, Zane's age, like, eight, it's from my childhood. Like, you're still in your childhood. Right. <laughs> it's okay. Can't, we can't keep everything. Absolutely everything he he does that with. Mm-hmm. And he, but it's from my childhood. Yeah, and every piece of art, and Zane loves to draw, so he's drawing all the time. I have to, like, you know, I can't keep them all. There's just not enough room, so they have to go away. (laughs) Smuggle it out like a drug mule. (laughs) Seriously, honestly, I'm not even lying. I have to hide stuff in the trash. Like, I'll put stuff on top so that he won't see what I've thrown away. Like, even his school papers, you know, when they send them home, they'll send home a bunch. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I'll usually put like something on the fridge or whatever that he did really well in. Um, yeah. But I have to, yeah, I hide them in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. And I've put done stuff that. on top. Because he'll find them and take them out. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And don't even t- think about the Legos. Don't even try uh, with the Legos. Yeah. No, yeah. he can keep all his Legos. I don't care if he plays. As long as he plays with stuff, it doesn't bother me. But yeah, um, his Nerf guns are out of control. But that's been happening for a while. It has. It has. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. I've been there, and I think every parent listening is like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> we're doing that too. Mm-hmm. So you're yeah. not alone, my friend. You're not alone. Um, That's my hint for you. Put other trash on top so they don't see. <laughs> right? Or wait till <laughs> they go. Wait till they, they go to the bin. Yeah. The bin. Yeah. Or wait till they go to their families for the summer. That works right? too. Because um, you know they're just going to come back. He's just going to come back with a fuck ton more stuff. So you might as well just weed all of it out. Yeah. So um, he's already like, my dad already got him a bunch of stuff. Um, I didn't get him that much, but we're going to Mexico and whatever. So, and he already got his big present for me. So we got a new scooter. Oh, fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yay. So yeah. And a new helmet. (laughs) Oh, cute. That's adorable. Yeah. That's so adorable. All righty. Well, yeah, that's all I got. Um, I don't have any EVPs this week. Do you? Mm. You want to trans Allegheny? That's it. Yep. That's that's all that's happening. Oh, I'm lying. We start our snack size. Ah, I knew it. As we were talking, something would pop into my head. We start our snack size episodes on Monday morning, guys. They're a little bit um, teeny little stories and. They're all about really weird stuff. And we're going to bring them to you every Monday morning so that you can start your weeks off right and weird. And Laura's is uh, this week. They're not going to be every Monday, but when we release them, they will be on Monday mornings. And Laura is kicking it off with her first weird story. So that is coming to you on May 2nd. I knew it would come to me as we got to talking. It just took us a little while. But we got it. Yeah, we got it. So um, to that end, Laura, why don't you tell everybody, I've, I've already forgotten the flow of the show, uh, where okay. we're, what we're talking about and where we're taking them. We're not taking them anywhere, but what are we talking about? We're not, well, we're going lots of places today. Tonight, <laughs> today, we're going to talk about the Chupacabra. Yes. And also, I purposely picked this picture and put the words like right under its creepy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what are the sources? The sources for today are texasobserver.org. It's an article by Asher LB and princeton.edu. So, guys, just so you know, spoiler alert. um, Obviously, this is legit because Princeton has written a paper on this cryptid. (laughs) (laughs) So it's got to be real because Princeton doesn't do anything half-assed, do they? Do we know? Probably. I mean, you know. I mean, maybe. All right. Let's talk about the Chupacabra. Probably should. (laughs) Chupacabra. <laughs> Chupacabra is probably one of the more popular cryptids, I think, with, right up there with mm-hmm. Bigfoot and um, Mothman and the Jersey Devil. We've covered all of those. Well, we didn't. Mm-hmm. We haven't covered Bigfoot, but um, we did cover Chessie, the Chesapeake Bay monster. Um, we did. We did for Archie's birthday last year, remember? That's right. That was yeah, his yeah. special I episode. Yeah, that was what I said we did. Yeah. Um, I thought you were asking me. We did? <laughs> no, no, I remember because oh. I got him the shirt for his birthday. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Um, so, yeah, we've covered a few of them. But I think um, the Chupacabra is one of uh, the more popular ones. So let's tell everybody about this crazy half dog wolf reptile dragon thing. All right, I like that yes. introduction. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> right. Spent weeks it's writing it. It's a thing. It's a something thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, <laughs> all right. So, in the summer of 1995, a wave of livestock killings rocked the towns of rural Puerto Rico. Uh, the victims were found with wounds at their throats, seemingly emptied of blood. Um, without a culprit, dark rumors spread throughout the island. Uh, somebody somewhere gave the culprit a name: Chupacabra. The goat sucker. Gross. I mean, why a goat sucker? I mean, I get why, but you. Just you. Yeah. Also, I like goats. They're cute. Don't Um, suck goats. (laughs) Don't. 
<laughs> so that August, as the panic was building to a fever pitch, a woman named Madeline Tolentino reported a bizarre sighting outside her mother's house um, in Canovanas. Sorry, friends, Puerto Rico friends. I'll just apologize now. <laughs> Along all the friends, everyone listening, we're all, we're right. very sorry. <laughs> yeah. A long-limbed earless creature with a spiny back appeared in the yard. She said, huge eyes staring through the window. Spooked by her scream, the thing leaped into the jungle. Ew. Yeah. I'll probably see you a lot. I see eyes on the outside of my house looking in. Uh-uh. And then have it, watch it leap anywhere if, after yeah. you scream? Mm-mm. Like, even delivery drivers, anybody. I just don't... Just go. <laughs> don't come here. And don't fucking leap. That's just creepy. Walk right. away. <laughs> Have some dignity for fuck's for sake. For the love of God! <laughs> <laughs> Lords a leaping and shit. Oh, right, sorry. Right. Go on. All right. All right. So, in the wake of Tolentino's account, aided by a sketch that she later produced with local UFO researcher, um, Jorge Martin... Reports of bipedal, spiny, and red-eyed creatures proliferated. Over 200 in Puerto Rico alone. Wow. Some asserted... Yeah, right? That's a fucking lot. That's kind of a lot. Is, it is. Some asserted that it was an escaped United States genetics ex- experiment. We would never do anything like that. Or an alien collecting blood to spread AIDS. Ew. It, yeah. I don't think they're here to do that. In the that. 90s, there was just so much AIDS um, paranoia. Fear, Yeah. Yeah. Um, Its form fluctuated wildly, the number of spines on its back, whether it crept or leaped or flew on bat wings or floated through the air using psychokinesis. Well, that'd be cool. I mean... That would be kind of (laughs) cool. So the first sighting in the continental United States took place a year later in Miami. Of course. With others appearing in Mexico. Yeah. Miami. It's Miami. Of course it's (laughs) Miami. (laughs) I mean, if I was going to come, that's where I'd go to. (laughs) Right. <laughs> um, with others appearing in Mexico, Brazil, Chile, Spain, and Portugal. Cool. Uh, within a few years, the chupacabra had transformed into a full-blown global phenomenon. Okay. So. This is a new one, though. 95. Like, I'm surprised right. that that's, like, when it... I think that's when they kind of came up with the name. Like, mm. that kind of stuck. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe solidified it a bit. Cool. Um. The most radical change was yet to come. In 2000, a Nicaraguan rancher shot and wounded something attacking his goats. A few days later, a ranch hand found the carcass, a hairless, rangy looking canid. Canid? It, basically, canid? dog like. So it was the first time an actual body had been associated with the legend. And despite claims by the rancher and an overzealous media that it was a genetics experiment or a cross between a wolf and a crocodile, very fucking weird. That's very <laughs> sci-fi <laughs> movie-esque. <laughs> it really is. So a cursory examination by anatomy specialists at the National Autonomous University of Nicaragua revealed that it was a common dog, likely stricken with mange. Mm, okay. The rancher protested, accusing the university of a conspiracy. But a new model for the goat sucker had emerged. A skulking, monstrous canine. So the first time Phyllis Kenyon saw the chupacabra, it was slipping through the pastures on her south central Texas ranch in broad daylight. It was June 2007, and Kenyon, a naturopathic doctor and hunter, had just returned to Cuero from Africa. Sure. All right. She'd seen some odd things there, but nothing like this. A hairless canine figure with blue-gray flesh and bony limbs. Soon after, she and her husband found one of their chickens with, with its throat torn open, apparently drained of blood. Ugh. It sounds like a skinny wolf or something. It kind of does. Um, like, well, stricken Texas, with mange. I think they have, depending on where they are, I think there's um, there's even mountain lions and stuff. There's kind of crazy stuff in Texas. I mean, Maybe it's just a giant armadillo. And it's-, I- <laughs> <laughs> it's lost its shell, and <laughs> it's really—it's just right? an armadillo without its shell, guys. <laughs> um, over the next few days, the mystery predator struck again, leaving what appeared to be an extenuated, sanguinated chickens across the ranch. You always have Kenyon problems said- with that word. 
Me? Yeah. I know the word. I said it 17 <laughs> times earlier. Like, and I knew as, as soon as I saw it in the text, I was like, I'm going to fuck this up when I actually can <laughs> say the word out loud. But I can say it all the rest of the fucking time. Yeah. Whatever. You say exsanguinated in daily conversation or you're like, I can say it all the rest of the time. <laughs> Sometimes my kids are weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's another podcast. Go on. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, Kenyon set up cameras, hoping to catch it in the act. So when that failed, she asked her neighbors to let her know if they saw, captured, or killed it. Can you imagine having that fucking conversation with your neighbors? Like, hey. <laughs> right. I'd be like, I am not going anywhere near the goddamn thing. <laughs> I'll be in the house if you fucking need me. Seriously. Um, on the phone, 911. Somebody better get out here because I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Just press 9-1 and wait. Right. <laughs> in mid-July, a neighboring rancher called to say that one of the creatures had been hit by a car near his property. So as Kenyon stood puzzling over the scrawny body, they got another call about another strange carcass, this one closer to her ranch. Mm. She sped back in her car, and there it was, thin, hairless, bizarre. So she loaded it into her tractor and... and only in Texas, and took it back to the ranch to photograph it. That brush with celebrity changed her life. You want to see it? Yeah, show okay. me. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it looks more like an herb. I don't, I mean, it looks like a dog, but. It looks like a dog. Um, it, I. It looks like a dog had a baby with an armadillo. It really does kind of look like an armadillo. <laughs> But yeah, it, you know, it's got the the teeth, the can you know, the canine teeth, right. and it's got you know the, I don't know, it's it's the pin back ears, mm -hmm. yeah, the little eye sockets that are just creepy. I mean, it's a dog's, it's the head of an animal. It's not the full body for that, guys. Right, everybody right. listening um, on a podcast station that's not watching the YouTube channel. Um, number one, what are you waiting for? And number two, it's a picture of a woman that's holding the, the severed head of an animal. And that's what right. we're talking about. So, yeah, that's that. Yeah. And yeah. it does look like a dog. It has the long snout. It's got the um, tongue the hanging only, out. Yeah. And it looks like their ears are kind of pinned back, almost like the ears of a Doberman. It kind of looks like a Doberman, actually, mm. but not the right color. It's like and its head is sort of flat, like the, the, mm. there's no defined snout up to a, like a forehead or I don't know. Mm. There's yeah. no ridge, forehead ridge. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, that bumpy yeah. thing on the front of their head, that, you know, <laughs> that thing right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't, it didn't have that. So. No. No. All right. All right. Sorry, go on. Change, separate, celebrity okay. change in her life. All right. Yes. So we've done documentaries on National Geographic, History Channel, Discovery, Animal Planet. We've done about 13 shows overseas. And we've Damn. done about 60 documentaries in the States, she said. Fucking A. Everybody <laughs> wants to know more about the Chupacabra. I mean, me too. Oh, but you're gonna. T we're here to tell them more. All right, sorry. <laughs> right. Forgot where I was. We're learning. <laughs> the chupacabra is among the most popular of the mystery beasts, an integral part of Texas folklore, and a semi-regular guest star in sensational cable documentaries and credulous oh. local news reports alike. Cool. For ten years, legends of the blood-sucking monster have been a staple of rural life throughout the central part of the state, fueled by a succession of alleged carcasses, sightings, and tall tales. <laughs> According to Ben Radford, researcher with the Center for Skeptical Inquiry and author of Tra Tracking the Chupacabra, Texas is a chupacabra factory. <laughs> one of the foremost states associated with the vampire. Cool. Uh, wait, foremost states associated with vampires? With the vampire. The vampire being the chupacabra, the goat sucker. Oh, gotcha. It him a blood, right? Like, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, whoa, we're going um, to get the, into vampires now. <laughs> right. But the Chupacabra wasn't always a resident in Lone Star State, and it didn't always look like a dog. In the years since the first supposed sightings of the creature, it has been a spine-backed alien, a winged kangaroo or a goblin, a predatory monkey, or an unusually <laughs> ambitious mongoose. <laughs> oh, I hope it was the monkey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Only one fact of the tale has remained constant. The chupacabra is out there in dark thickets and empty um, deserts, and it wants your livestock. Oh, you better not get that piggery, Laura. 
I was just going to get started. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's a list of some sightings. Um, in the mid-1970s, um, it was found in the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas. Uh, okay. There were sightings of what may have been a condor linked to a rash of mutilated cattle. And the blood was removed to the last drop. Condors the early s- can't do that, can they? Suck no, blood? But, okay. Um, in the early 70s in Brownsville, Texas, a rancher fa- found a bull dead, no blood around it, and no tracks. So, creeps. That's a lot of blood. That was one that is a lot full blood, chupacabra. But- <laughs> <laughs> See the chupacabra walking her back like all cartoon. Right? Dogs. All fucking blood drunk. <laughs> The giant belly. (laughs) Belching. In 1994, in Puerto Rico, four or six little grays found under a bed and chased out of a house with a broom. And that was reported by Joyce Murphy. There was a litter of Uh, them. I guess. Ew. Um, In March 11th... um, (laughs) <laughs> I wonder if Love Fields will take him. We'll call. <laughs> um, March 11, 1995, um, in Orocovis, eight sheep were found dead, and the animals had three strange marks or puncture holes in the chest and were described as completely drained of blood as well. Mm. Um, Sunday, November 19th, 1995, in Puerto Rico, um, the chupacabra is blamed in the death um, of dozens of turkeys, rabbits, goats, cats, dogs, and even horses and cows. All right, the so line has been ripped. crossed. Dogs. Right. Oh, and cats. Yeah, that's a lot of... I said to have... Maybe there's... Whatever. <laughs> like, maybe there's all coyotes. <laughs> said to have ripped open the bedroom window of a house in the north central city of Caguas. Uh, destroyed a stuffed teddy bear and left a puddle of slime and a piece of rancid white meat on the windowsill. Ooh. Gross. It had hairy arms and huge red eyes. In another attack, it came at about 7 a.m. It just showed up, and then poof, it vanished. Okay, so it can disapparate, too. All right. uh, Okay. Maybe it's one of those fantastic beasts. Yeah, also in Puerto Rico, November 19th, um, it had occurred like 35 times in three months. Um, (laughs) Yeah, 35 reports. So um, a resident saw it one afternoon in his backyard when it came out of the brush and bit the family dog. Fuck you, buddy. Uh, Yeah. I think it belongs to the monkey family, but it isn't a monkey exactly, he said. It ran like a monkey and was about four feet tall, but it didn't have a tail. Weird. That is weird. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue on with the sightings because... There's a lot of really weird ones. Um, on December 14th, in the Noguabo on the East Coast, several caged rabbits were found dead with holes in their neck area without a drop of blood. Other rabbits had disappeared. Near um, the rabbit cage was a track with a three-toed claw. Um, Friday, December 15, 1995, in Puerto Rico, in um, one year, is thought to be um, responsible for at least 1,000 killings of goats, sheep, cattle, chickens, and other animals. There are many eyewitness accounts. The creature is four to six feet tall, walks upright, is not humanoid, and has large oval alien type eyes. Hmm. I'd like to see the composite sketch of all of these descriptions because it just sounds like the most jacked up creature ever. Ever. So then December 18, 1995 in Puerto Rico, animals died as a result or as the result of a single puncture mark found on some part of the body, which um, apparently drained them of blood. Uh, One photo shows a Siamese cat with a puncture mark through its skull. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Kitty, kitty. Um, going back to Miami, the rural area of Miami. <laughs> I didn't know there was rural Is there area. A rural I, area? I was like, I'm I didn't like, know that. The fucking Everglades, right? <laughs> Um, This uh, killed about 40 animals. One woman saw a dog-like figure standing up with two short hands in the air. 
I don't know. Um, back to Texas in May of 1996 in the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas. A pet goat was dead with three puncture wounds in its neck. A six-year-old goat was found with tail, 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 nope, tell tail <laughs> marks of the chupacabra. Um, down in Juarez, Mexico on May 2nd, many small mammals, dogs, etc. have met with this tall animal-like uh, being with three-toed feet and hands on haunches with forearms suspended at chest level. So like a... It sounds like a T-Rex arm. T-Rex kind of thing. <laughs> um... Yeah, very similar to a kangaroo. It has a row of spikes or straight feather projection like projections from its head and down its back that raise and lower and have been seen to glow with their own light. Well, now that sounds kind of ravey and disco fun. Mm -hmm. um, it has been seen, <laughs> <So fun. laughs> right? I like this one, uh, to take off on all fours. The sucking device seems to be a tube-like projection from the mouth. Ugh. Okay. Ant eater tongue link just pops out <laughs> like a straw. Like, <laughs> is it a bendy straw? I wonder. Um, <laughs> now, um, Thursday, May 2nd, 1996, um, in Mexico and Miami, <laughs> attacks are becoming more distributed. Wounds resemble one quarter inch holes similar to a biopsy puncture that extend completely through muscle tissue. And in at least one instance, the wounds were discovered pronouncedly through the inner tissue without leaving any wound traces on the surface layer of skin. That's interesting. Yeah, that's real weird. That is real weird. Um, that one's aliens. Okay. That on. one's aliens. <laughs> yeah. So um, those are the some of the more intriguing or hysterical sightings that I found. So I <laughs> threw those in. Um, however, most cryptids, uh, which are, again, mystery animals of folklore, do not leave much in the way of physical evidence, surfacing instead in blurred photographs or ambiguous ambiguous Sanguinated. tracks <laughs> <laughs> sanguinated tracks no um ambiguous tracks but texas chupacabras have a way of leaving behind bodies or perhaps bodies in texas have a way of becoming chupacabras <laughs> <laughs> fair, enough. Uh, fair enough let's take a look at one of these like grainier pictures that somebody says swears is a picture that they captured of the chupacabra let me see where i put it i think it's this one yeah yeah it looks like a coyote it does no but it had like mm -hmm. no tail but it doesn't i mean i don't see kangaroo arms i don't see yeah. that it's four it could be four to six feet tall standing up it certainly does look a little emaciated mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah, it really does look like a coyote, I think. But mm -hmm. I mean, the coloring, I don't know, they are kind of dark like that. It's just kind of a shitty photograph. So I mean, it could. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it could, maybe it's tails tucked up. Maybe it's scared. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's I mean, maybe it is. <laughs> um, in 2004, 2007, and 2009, several chupacabra carcasses popped up in the central part of the state, many with warty skin and protruding teeth. All of them, including Kenyon's, have been subjected to DNA testing, and the results have been the same. Mangy, sickly coyotes or dogs. Um, but this bitch ain't having it. She is not uh, having it. She's like, mm -mm. <laughs> hey, the sets, we'll just, uh, uh, yeah, she's not having it. Uh, <laughs> this diagnosis does not satisfy her. She says, quote, I have now done DNA at five different universities. All of them came back identical. They do not match any animal in the archive, she said. However, this isn't true. As reported in Radford's book, Texas State University researchers found that the DNA was a complete match for a coyote. Other labs concurred. But Canyon is undeterred. She's kept the carcass and skull in her freezer and has taxidermy <laughs> has a taxidermy mount of the gnarled, ugly creature on display. Um, the fact that this crazy lady in Texas uh, just walk around with the dog, coyote dog head and keeping it in her freezer. Hanging it. Um, yeah. And hanging it. It's worthy of the story no matter what. Alone. Happens. Alone. We need to get her on the show. If you're listening, honey, we want to talk to you. Um, how's that thing holding up in your freezer? 
Right. Uh, <laughs> do your guests get freak out when they get right. ice? Like, what? How do the Thanksgiving holidays? I bet they're not at your house. <laughs> Just gonna say, Grandma, it's a fabulous. Uh, don't get don't get ice cream at Grandma's house. Right. Don't do it. <laughs> it's a fabulous conversation starter, though. <laughs> So when pressed, she said that she doesn't know what her chupacabra is. She speculated that perhaps it's a hybrid with a Mexican wolf or an escapee from some dog breeder in the area, but she's adamant that it's not a normal mangy coyote. Perhaps, she said, the chupacabras are a type of coyote, but a rare sort. Naturally hairless, probably living underground, and very fond of blood. No matter the creature's appearance, the chupacabra believers fixate on its alleged thirst for blood, pointing to the drained livestock as evidence of its existence. So most people aren't clear on how to interpret forensic evidence, unlike me and Laura. We're going to break this down for you at the end. (laughs) Um, (laughs) In dead animals, the drop in blood pressure leads to the blood pooling in the lowest portions of the body. Laura, do you know what that's called? Little Miss Armchair Detective. I know you've heard the word. Um, I don't remember, but I've seen it in real life. Lividity. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, if you stick it with a knife, it's not going to bleed unless you flipped it over where the blood has pooled to. And people mm-hmm. don't do that with animals, typically. Um Even assuming the blood had been drained, the bodies that Canyon describes don't seem physically capable of doing it. Hang on. I'm going to sneeze. I believe I'm going to pause this. We'll be right back. Never mind. It just put a stupid look on my face and then disappeared. (laughs) (laughs) All for nothing. All for nothing. Stop doing coke before the show, Carrie. I mean, (sighs) okay. Um... So even assuming that the blood had been drained, the bodies that Canyon describes don't seem physically capable of doing it. There are real vampiric animals, mosquitoes, lamprey eels, vampire bats, and blood is not an easy thing to make a living off of. It's high in iron and can cause a dangerous buildup in the bloodstream. Actual vampires, said Radford, have structures in their mouths and digestive systems that allow them to suck blood and digest it without injuring themselves. These creatures have been offered up as chupacabras, may look bizarre, but they just don't have the anatomy for vampirism. Which I was like, well, that's pretty cute, compelling and cool. That is very interesting, yeah. A little more than I want to know about a fucking mosquito, but whatever. No. I hate those things. Um, the chupacabra... <laughs> Fuck off. Um, The chupacabra is too thoroughly enmeshed in mass culture to be dismissed by mere mere physical evidence. Uh, (laughs) We don't need that. (laughs) Did you see what's in that bitch's freezer? Right? I mean, we can look at the picture again. Clearly, that's something weird. Um, And it may be the head. It may be the person holding the head. But there's weirdness (laughs) happening in it. Um, <laughs> one of those things is dangerous. Right. I'm not going to say which one. Yeah. One of those things is not like the other. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway. And for believers, any attempt to explain away the creature is simply more proof that it exists. We are going to get so much angry comments. <laughs> The history of the chupacabra and its origins are intertwined with conspiracy theory in a way that is unique in cryptozoology. That sort of keeps it afloat. Some speculate about genetics testings, escaped aliens, or black helicopters collecting chupacabra eggs in the Atacama Desert. Others are simply convinced a species of ugly vampiric dog haunts rural Texas, which seems a little bit more likely. Um... But these stories thrive on the fundamental conviction that experts are blinkered, unable to see the truth. Similar convictions are common with cryptids like Bigfoot or Nessie. But unlike those creatures, the Chupacabra, Capra? Nope. Chupacabra did not exist prior to 1995. It has no folkloric predecessors to fall back on. Um, The figure bears a whiff of the uncanny, seldom seen, constantly shifting, known only by its victims. The Chupacabra is a tautology. It exists because we know that it must exist. Why else would we be talking about it? And that is the story of the Chupacabra. Let's take a quick look at some of the different variations that people have said it looks like. 
it ain't pretty no matter how you look at it look at that middle one that no, one just looks really not that one actually looks like a, like a uh one of those um creatures from the hell is that game that koi plays the movies that i love uh, oh god the umbrella corporation raccoon city someone screaming i know we've got listeners screaming the movie at me and they get in the video <laughs> game i don't know oh my god but- M- mila jovovich is in it uh-oh Anyway, say what you're going to say. It'll come to me. I swear. Yeah. I mean, they're very ugly um, for sure. I find it all very interesting. I'm not saying there couldn't be, especially like in Puerto Rico and the rural areas, it's a jungle. There could definitely be something out there sucking blood. But yeah, um, is it the same thing that's in Texas? Highly unlikely. Um, In Texas, it probably is a mixture of it being the coyotes or you know mixed with the wolves or whatever you know there's a that lot could of be. and then they all have mange i mean it's not pretty no it really isn't and there's it's pretty wide open out there so yeah running around on the ranches and stuff there's fucking nothing yeah i'm sorry this is bugging me i have to look this movie up keep talking all right um but i don't oh, know god i can hear them yelling the movie at me it's interesting Six is it six something? Resident Evil. Oh well, there you go. It was right here, guys. It was right here. It was. Th- I swear, it was right here. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was about to go get Koi, and then I'm like, "Why? You have your phone? Just look it up." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that middle one looks like I one of those creatures from Resident Evil. In my fucking hand. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> in every fucking language, too. It's ridiculous. Um. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I don't, uh, I think I'd like to think that Mothman is real. And I think the Jersey Devil is kind of quirky. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he, if he were real, okay. Uh, this one's just, I just sounds, what anything that might go? kill my dogs, I'm not down with. Right, you're not, well, I'm yeah. not into it. I'm not into um, it. I'm not here for that. But there's a bunch of rainforest um, on the island oh, in yeah. Puerto Rico, too. So they're in its dense. I mean, I drove through part of it and mm. it's beautiful there. But, you know, when that kind of situation, there's how do you know what's living in there? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. They're constantly finding new thing. shit in the rainforest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very dense. You can't see mm-hmm. it from the top. You know what I mean? There's lots of places to hide. So you, know, you never know. Same I mean, with I the see Miami clubs. In, Right, I, right, and then right. it went clubbing in Miami, and then it went clubbing in Miami. <laughs> it probably went and saw Erin play when she was there last month. Erin, <laughs> right? take a look at this picture. Does right. it look like? <laughs> did you get video of any of that set you did? <laughs> when you were DJing, did you see something shiny? Little shiny eyes. Little shiny eyes, kind of hairy, a little sickly. Oh, everyone. Okay, never mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. <exactly. laughs> <laughs> now we've lost all of our Miami listeners. Sorry, guys. We're fucking with you. We're kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, it's possible. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think... What do you think is more likely, Mothman or Chupacabra? Chupacabra. Really? That it's actually a goat-sucking thing with a, like, you know... Well, maybe straw not all of that, tooth? One I think buck that there's something tooth that's a straw? Real- pushing that the only thing i could think that vamp that um mothman like could be would be um one of those giant vampire those bad those big ass bats yes like i mean that could be be. something like that like fucking crazy you know but yeah yeah that's true i mean it could all be based on real animals just People are just, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I do think it's interesting. I, I like that last sentence, the chupacabra is a tautology. It exists because we know that it must exist, or why else would we be talking about it? So, anyway, that is uh, the chupacabra, guys. We took that poor mangy little dog and ripped it to shreds on this show, along with the lovely residents of Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Texas, we dragged them. Too well, far. we did drag gotcha. Texas. That's true. That happened. Um, and I actually Someone think maybe. we might have insulted a lot of Aaron's fans, which I'm really sorry for, guys. <laughs> Real sorry. Um, don't want to. Yeah, we're just joshing you. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got. I have no strange history, um, for tonight. We were out of the groove. Um, we really need to stop being out of the groove because then I, I'm not prepared. I don't have a, you know, great closing or, you know, I don't have, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, guys, uh, that's all I have. Laura, do you have anything in closing? Um, I do not, but if something sucks the blood out of your goat, call me. <laughs> I want to some... know. Actually, cut off its head and put it in the, in your freezer, and then call me. Okay. Also, I didn't notice, but your name has been jacked up all night. That's all right. People don't need to know who I am. Listen. Are you hiding I'm from hiding. somebody? Are you hiding from the chupacabra? <laughs> Constantly. Con I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> he just knocked on your door. Is that what you're trying to say? Right. He's what on my ring phone? camera. Oh my god! All right, I'll fix it for the next uh, episode. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you were shit talking with us. And for those of you who are screaming Resident Evil at me, yes, I did hear you in my mind. Um, it still just wasn't coming through and computing and coming out of my mouth until I Google. Oh yeah, and it. make sure that you guys check out the new the little weird stories that we're gonna put out. So check yes. them out on Monday. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be really quick, like maybe 15 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'm excited for them because there's a lot of weird shit, real true weird shit that goes on in this world. And we're going to tell you about them um, on Monday mornings. Uh, like I said, not every Monday morning, just whenever we find a story and we record it and we'll throw it out there. But um, they're gonna be our little snicker snacker snack size episode. So that's all we got uh, from here. Uh, as we always say, guys, stay safe out there because you never know who or what goat sucking chupacabra or is the weird lady in Texas or the with <laughs> stuff in her freezer. <laughs> Careful of nanas with creepy shit in their freezers. <laughs> <Right>. They're out there. <laughs> they are out there. They are and out they're there. Listening to you. They're listening. They're fucking listening. <laughs> they are listening. <laughs> um. <laughs> Anywho, that's that'll do it for us. <laughs> Sorry, I took that a little extra today. We did. It's, it's fine. Been a while. That's kind of it's been a while, yeah. <laughs> um we will see you next week, guys, with a brand new story. We hope that you enjoy it. We hope you, that you've enjoyed this. And consider joining us on Patreon, patreon.com slash H O A H podcast, where you get a bunch more of this stupid bullshit. Come on over. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.